During your playthrough of Fire Emblem Engage, the Somniel is a super important place that you definitely want to take advantage of. But the first thing you really need to know is what does every sum of the parts of Somniel really equal up to? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you 10 tips or 10 things for you to know about the Somniel to drastically improve the way you're looking at it and making sure that you get the most out of your Somniel visits after battles or trials. What's going on, guys? I'm Dom from the Game Looters, and in these videos, I'm helping you out through Fire Emblem Engage making you have a really good experience. All right, let's not waste any time. Let's get right into the Somniel and let's look through all of the different areas of the Somniel and how to take advantage of it. All right, the first thing that I want to share with you guys is when you come to the Somniel, okay, you need to push X on your controller. And when you push X, there's going to be some very noticeable things that are that you kind of really need to be on the lookout for. If we look at the top left of the screen, it's going to tell you anything that is new currently in the Somniel. So if you look at my top left, we see that I have a new strength training difficulty available. I have a new wyvern ride available and i have a new tower of trials available so those are the kind of the new things that are available and depending on when you complete certain chapters there might be certain areas that are new to the somniel that will appear here in notifications as well so make sure you guys are looking out at the top left all right now we're going to go back to the right side here during the the, the kind of like the drop down locations and here, this is just a quick call out for you to see anything that you still need to do. So let's say you've been spending a, a lot of time in this Somniel, because there's sometimes where I spend like an hour or two hours in the Somniel. So, like for this, let's say I hover over Cafe Terrace, and you can see here it says Order Meal right there at the bottom of the screen. That basically indicates, because it's highlighted, that I haven't ordered one yet. If we come over to another place, like the pond, I have fishing six times remaining. Basically, this means I haven't fished yet. So this is just a cool little indicator if you've been spending a lot of time at the Somniel to know what you have and haven't done yet. All right, now let's get into our real first tip, and that is cooking. Cooking is vitally important in Fire Emblem Engage. So we're going to head to the Cafe Terrace, and I'll kind of show you why. So today we have Clan at the... Somniel Cafe Terrace here. He's going to be our cook for today. And ordering meals is going to allow you very specific bonuses during your next battle. And it will also allow you to increase your support level with certain characters in the game. So, like, let's say right now I want to increase my support for Tamara. And let's say I also want to increase my support for... I know they don't necessarily get along, but I want to increase my support for Citrine as well. The good thing here is when you are cooking a meal, it'll always indicate the special meal of the day, which is the eager meal, which is indicated by sparkles. This is usually the one that you can always foolproof do, but if there's something specific you want to tackle, like let's say I want an effect of speed or magic, or maybe I want like a plus two for speed on my next battle, I can go ahead and make a candied fruit. But for this example, I'll just do the eager meal for today. And you can go in and add some extra ingredients. And it's always good to add, you know, a rare item as well. And this one, because this one looks like it's a crepe, I will add a fruit. And they'll go ahead and make it. So by doing this, this is going to get us some benefits here. And I'll show you that in one moment. All right, and as you guys see here, we made a robust hot crepe, and because we added some additional items in here, not only did we get the four base level of what that meal gained us, we also get additional stats as well. So if you have a male character, like I'm playing with male Alir, we're also going to get strength plus one, speed plus one, defense plus one, magic, and resistance. So we're going to get a plus two on some of the ones we already got by simply adding additional ingredients. So this is why cooking is incredibly important. So make sure that you never leave the Somniel without cooking a meal, especially one to go. All right, the next thing at the Somniel that you should be doing before you leave to your next battle or trial is strength training. Yes, yes, I understand. It's a little silly of a mini game, and it does get a little tiring, but it does definitely give you some benefits. So if you look at strength training here, if we do push-ups, we get a strength increase or we get a boost to our strength in the next battle. If we do sit-ups, we get a boost to our HP. 
And if we do squats, we get a boost to our dexterity. So make sure that as you're at the Somnial, you never leave without doing at least one of these three. If you don't know what to do, I always suggest just simply doing HP because who doesn't need enough hit points when they're in battle? Of course, if there's something specific that you want, like you want additional strength or if you want some additional dexterity, feel free to do whichever one here. But just know that these are the different options that you have. So make sure that you're always doing at least one of these before you leave the Somnio. For our next tip, we're heading to the Grotto. All right, at the Grotto, you never want to forget about Sami, but also when you're here, make sure you pick up these sparklies. These are always going to be bond fragments inside of here, but we also want to give some love to our boy Sami. So you can come in and simply decide, if you don't want to feed him, you can simply decide just to pet him. And the cool thing is when you love Sami, he is going to poop out some bond fragments for you. So just, you know, always give him some love, give him some pets, that way he can get you some additional bond fragments because we're always going to want some of that. Thank you, Sami. And just like that, we got 100 bond fragments just from simply giving him a couple of pets. Of course, you can rotate by feeding and petting him, and if you do it enough, he'll give you some additional ones, but I suggest just doing it once or twice, giving him a feed, giving him a pet, and you should be able to get at least 100 to 200 bond fragments additionally. These are just some really easy bond fragments for you to be able to get. All right, tip number four, we're back at the cafe and we're staying on the topic of bond fragments. Make sure that you always come and head to your bulletin board and come down to the achievement section here. Under the achievement section, you're gonna have different things that you have completed. These are going to net you a lot, and I mean a lot of bond fragments. Literally almost all the bond fragments you get in Fire Emblem Engage is gonna come from this board. So never forget to do a check-in when you're at the Somniel. So like right now, I'm going to hit accept all by hitting ZR. And when I do, I got over 3,000 bond fragments. Now, I don't still have a whole lot, but it's a lot more than I had before I did this. So never leave the Somniel without making sure that you do a check-in with your achievements. All right, tip number five, we are at the arena. And when we hover over the arena, you see a, that it says standard remaining three. You never want to do a Somnial visit after a battle or trial and not come to the arena. Basically, this is free XP. When you come here, you have two options. You can do standard or emblem. Now, if you want to increase your emblem level with a specific person or a specific unit, you can do that. And if I want to come and do any bonding with one of the units here and a emblem, I can come in and do that. By hovering over each unit, over to the right, you can see what their bond level currently is with the specific emblem. So if there's someone you're trying to get a higher level with, or if there is a skill that you would like to obtain from one of the emblems, this is how you would train them. But the most important thing here is never leave without doing your standard trainings. This is going to allow you free XP for certain units that you might not be using. So like me currently, I've been putting a lot of focus on Gold Mary and Citrine because I definitely want to use them more in the future, but I don't want to use them currently because because they're not one of my strongest units. But if I want to go ahead and put Gold Mary into the training here, it'll pick a random emblem or unit for her to face. And this will just allow me to get some free XP. And also, special tip, if you don't want to see them actually fight, just hit the plus sign on your controller and it'll skip it. And you'll see there, now I have Gold Mary who leveled up to level five. And that's just going to be extremely useful for you to be able to level up some of your additional characters. And like me here, I just learned a new class skill. So definitely this is very useful for you to be able to level up those units that you don't normally play with. So never leave the Somnia without doing at least your three standard trainings at the arena. The next one is the farmland area here. And we are currently here at the farmyard. And I already claimed them for when I got here to the Somniel. But when you get here, if you have at least a one, one or more dogs at your stable, I typically have two or three. I recently adopted a owl, a camel, and an eagle, so I wanted to see them on my farmyard. But they're going to drop a variety of different items. But specifically, the white or the black or just the regular dog, any dog is going to drop or silver or steel for you. And you're always gonna get at least five drops from coming over to the farmyard. Like I said, I already claimed them today, but make sure that you're always doing a visit here at the farmyard to pick up those, those ingots, those steels, 
those silvers, all those things that they're going to drop by having dogs. So I always suggest at the beginning of the game, always have at least as many dogs as you can. Never visit somewhere that has an adoptable dog if you don't have one and adopt one. Have at least five dogs here to increase the amount of items that you can get from just simply coming and checking into the farmyard. All right, at number seven, we have the next thing on our list, and that is support. So first and foremost, having a good grasp of where your supports are is incredibly important. So before we get into where to go in the Somniel, let's simply look at where to go. So by going to reference, you can check on your support. And if you hit here, you can check on your on your support level with different characters. So if you just want to focus on Alir, you can check out what your support level is for your different units. And you can decide to focus on whichever one you want. Consequently, you can do this for all other units amongst themselves as well. As well as you can see what units that, you know, they're simply not going to have any relationship with as they just simply won't be as part of the list. So this is just a really good reference guide. This will also show you what support conversations you have available indicated like you see here by the yellow icon. All right, but you're here for the Somniel, so let's talk about how to increase support level. The easiest thing you can do is go over to the pool, and I'm already right there, but regardless, go over to the pool side, and we're going to head over right here to this section. Now, the thing to know is this specific shop isn't available until after chapter 13. If you want to get a full guide on every single gift that you can give to support units, and which ones are their favorites, click the video on screen now. I'm gonna give you the full ultimate gift guide. But for the moment, you can go in here and you have the flea market. And in the flea market, you can come in and buy different items that are going to be able to be gifted towards other units. This is incredibly important. You wanna check this every time you come to the Somniel after a battle or a trial, because these are gonna refresh and change. And yes, some units only like certain things. So if we go into what's available now, I know that I'm looking for a, I'm looking for a field guide. Uh, because I know Marin loves a field guide. Let's just say that she's the one that I want to work with. Well, this is not available, so I'm going to have to check again later. But let's say I want to buy a fairy tale book now. I can come and buy a fairy tale book, no problem. So definitely use this to increase support level among all of your characters. All right, now that we have talked about support levels, let's talk, let's talk about bond levels really quick. And this is just something that's only gonna be able to occur in the Somnium, which is the different bond conversation between you and your emblems like Ike right here. So just like support levels, you're gonna wanna come into your main menu and we're gonna hit reference. And this time we're gonna hit bond instead of support. This is gonna show us all the different bond conversations that we have available. Like right now, Lapis has a bond conversation with Leaf and that will allow them to get into the next level. Why is this incredibly important? Well, by increasing your bond level with certain emblem rings, you're gonna be able to get unique skills that you couldn't get otherwise. So it's gonna be incredibly important to come in and increase your bond level amongst different emblem rings, just like I did with Lin here and with Tamara with Lucina. And you're gonna wanna just kind of go in and increase these as much as you can. Now the way to increase them is simply by engaging with the emblems on the field. And that's gonna be based on your emblem rings and which specific emblem rings you have alongside your character. So you can see here that this one has bond level eight. So I know I needed to get it above 10. This one has 11, 13, etc. So simply by engaging with your emblem rings, you'll increase that bond level now naturally, but to engage in the actual conversation, you're going to want to come into your bond section and have the conversation with them here. This will also appear on your overworld map, so if you just kind of see them here, it'll tell you that they have a bond conversation available if it's with Alir. All right, at number nine, we're talking about bond rings. Early on in the game, not every character is going to be able to have an emblem ring. So that's where you're going to have to rely on bond rings. Bond rings are going to cost bond fragments where our earlier tips will come into play. To create a bond ring, you're going to come to the pedestal here and you're going to want to come in to create bond rings. Now you can come in and create a bond ring for any of the emblem rings that you currently have. Early on, you'll have Sigurd, Marth, you'll have Micaiah. So you can come in and create different bond rings for them. Now bond rings will be indicated on screen from bronze all the way to platinum. 
Bronze is going to inherit you one skill. Silver is going to inherit you two skills. Gold is three. And then Platinum, which is S rank, is going to get you three skills plus a potential hidden skill for each of the bond rings here. So, for example, let's say I want to go and create one for... Let's, let's say I want to create one for Byleth. I'll create one ring here. And this will give me a level C bond ring, which has one skill or one stat available to it. And that is okay. So you want to come in here and just kind of create a lot of different bond rings just so you have options. Because when you get a S rank bond ring, that can come equipped with a special skill that will definitely help out a lot of different players. So let me go ahead and show you kind of what the S rank one looks like. So if we come into emblem rings and I'll just pick uh, Saphir because she was a, a character I recently got. So if we come in and we look at the Byleth spawn rings here, we can come in and see Ferdinand has a S class. So if we go in and say, okay, we want to go ahead and equip uh, him here, we can see that all the stats like strength, dexterity, speed all go up. Now, unfortunately, my bond ring for Ferdinand didn't have a special skill on it, but you can see if any of the other ones that you create possibly do. I think I have one more s rank ring in here i don't know if that one has a skill either let me double check before i let you guys go and we go on to the next one that's elise here yeah this one doesn't have a, a special skill either but you can keep rolling for special skills again this is just incredibly useful early on don't waste all your bond fragments but just know that bond rings are incredibly useful all right, the last tip for the Somniel. This one's going to become available, I believe, around Chapter 5 or 6. You're going to get access to the Smithy, which is a uh, weapon forging here. And that is going to be this lady right over here. And this uh, Smithy is going to allow for a couple of different options. They're going to allow for refinement, engraving, and exchange. Exchange just sounds like what it is. You can exchange certain items for other ones. You can use that if you see below how I have 72 iron. If I need more, I can come and, you know, trade some steel for some iron, etc. I don't really use this too much because I have the dogs at the farmyard, but in case you need it, it is here. The other ones I want to talk about is engraving. Uh, engraving is incredibly important. Engraving will allow you to engrave a emblem on a weapon. So let's say I want to go after an axe and I want to engrave this steel great axe with a specific bond from a emblem, then I could do that here. And as you see here, the as you get more emblems, more emblem engravings will become available and they're going to net you different abilities or different uh, stat boosts, I should say, to your weapon. So like if I were to equip the dawn engraving here uh my weight will go down my avoid will go up and my dodge will go up so this will make me very easy to miss certain moves if i do an awakening one my hit will go up and let's say i do the dragon one this is from the dlc but my might will go up to 28. So this is just something to check in because as you get more emblem rings, you want to come and engrave some of your weapons from your favorite units onto their weapons. The next one is talking about refinement. As you get the dogs in your farmyard and you collect the steel, the silver, the iron, you're going to want to come in here and just see what weapons you can refine. As some basic need to know here, uh, iron, like if you start off with an iron axe, iron is going to be able to be melded all the way into steel. Steel is going to be able to be melded all the way into silver. And then it goes into the different ones that you have here. So like, let's say I have the brave axe and I want to get like a plus one or plus two. I can use the items and my money to get additional stats. So if you see on brave axe, my mic can go all the way up to 11. My hit can go all the way up to 80. Uh, another one that I was looking at to do here recently is my Flashing Fist Art, which is the last ability for the hit weapons here. So if I wanted to upgrade this one, I can get this all the way to a plus 5, and I can do Might for 14 and Hit for 90. I just simply need 50 Steel and 5 Silver, along with 7,500 Gold. Just make sure that you come in and check what options you have as far as upgrades. Pretty frequently, the reason I can't do any right now is I have no money, but you want to come in and check what refinements you can do pretty frequently because honestly, by doing them, you're going to get just more of an advantage on a weapon perspective than you would by not doing it. So just do random check-ins every time you come to the Somnium. All right, my friends, that has been the 10 tips 
for navigating the Somnia and things you should do every time you come here after a battle or trial. Let me know which tip was the one thing you didn't know and share any tips I didn't cover from the Somnia down in the comments below. And last thing, if you have nothing to comment, just leave an emoji so I know that you're seeing me seeing you see me. All right, my friends, like and subscribe before you leave. And of course, we'll check you out on the next Engage content. All right, see you in the next one. Peace.